All right, thanks a lot for staying with us. It's still uh, TVC Breakfast. Let's turn our attention now to the environment. This time, a, a recent oil spill allegedly caused by an international oil company's facility has ravaged 27 coastal communities in Akwa Ibom State. And there are a host of communities, as stated, among them Ukpom, Mpanak, and Esuk Ikim Akwaha. Well, the disaster has polluted water bodies, killing aquatic lives and disrupting fishing activities. It's also threatened the livelihoods of residents. And as the affected communities demand urgent intervention to restore their economic stability, we have joining us now via Zoom, uh, David Essay. He's the Communications and PR Director of the EBOM Community Development Stakeholders Forum to talk about this disaster and what it means for uh, the people of uh, the state. Thank you very much, Mr. Ese, uh, for joining us. We understand that this incident occurred uh, sometime around uh, August the 16th uh, this year, specifically within the Ibeno uh, local government area of Akwa Ibom State. Tell us more on uh, what you are seeing at the moment regarding the effect of this oil spill? Uh, the effect of the oil spill is terrible on the community, especially at this time. Actually, is a, uh, we have 27 coastal communities in the Kwaibom state which are badly affected by this. You know, because uh, it has uh, really um, devastated the livelihood of these the inhabitants of these communities and that's what they depend on one is that the water body is polluted secondly the aquatic life is totally destroyed because this is what these inhabitants depends on for their livelihood but now it's totally destroyed and so uh, it's like uh, this is an emergency because it just occurred on the 16th of August and and um, we are trying to see how we can liaise with the right bodies, you know, to be able to, to articulate what we need to do. And also uh, visit these communities to assess the impact the actual, uh, on, on site assessment to see what is the actual impact on the communities. And um, then after we liaise with the uh, respective, the uh, nursery bodies, uh, we'll be able to articulate how we can interface and engage with the uh, with mobile producing unlimited, natural unlimited, um, who is the spiller in this instance. Mm. And what's been the response of uh, the state government in terms of getting the oil firms to take responsibility of this spill? Yes, uh, really, as I said, um, the state government has not uh, really um, made a clear response um, at the moment because uh, the first thing is to assess the impact, you know, and then be able the extent of the impact. We know that there's a negative impact already, but we need to know the extent of the impact. And then to be done. Of course, in a situation like this, what needs to be done is not far-fetched because the spiller, the mobile producing unlimited, natural unlimited, need to take full responsibility and uh, uh, has some steps to return these communities to their normal life, to clean up the area and return the communities to normal, normal life or compensate them uh, for the time being until they're able to, to um, return them to the, clean up the water bodies and return them to their normal life. I know that that's not a small task. Mm -hmm. It might take time. So well, these communities need compensation. They need to continue to live, to survive, because the very means of the library is taken from them. And so it's a, it's a very uh, sad situation right now in these 27 coastal communities. So it's not a small thing. It's a big uh, crisis in these communities at the moment. And what makes it big? Because for uh, many um, no, non-residents, they, they could find it strange that an oil spill is occurring in Akwaibom State, even though, yes, Akwaibom falls under uh, riverine um, states, um, you know, oil-producing states and all of that. Also tell us, in terms of um, frequency, 
how would you describe the magnitude of um, this uh, particular oil spill? Tell us more. Yes, you've said it's big, but you know, let us know uh, just what makes it big in your words. You know, oil spillage follows the water body, the direction of the water body. It, it runs through wherever you have water on the coastal area of Aquaibon State. That is why as many as 27 communities are affected. If we want to drill down to the number of families affected, there will be much more. Than, if we want to drill down to the number of um, individuals in the family who are affected, there will be many more. So that is why I'm saying that if 27 communities are affected, so many families are affected and so many people are affected. So because um, you, it's difficult to control the spillage because as water is running, that's how the spillage goes along with the water and destroy, destroying the aquatic, aquatic life in these areas. So that's why I'm saying it is a big crisis mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. Help us understand how far these communities are uh, in ensuring that they get uh, justice. And what's been the alternative since this spillage for the fishers and other farmers in the community? Um, in fact, uh, as of now, they're just relying on what they've uh, been getting before. Because you cannot fish in a water that has oil spillage because they depend on fishing basically for their livelihood. And so some of the fish cannot breathe because the water has covered, the, the, the oil has covered the, 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 the top of the water and, and land, uh, some of the fish will be dead. So uh, some of the fish will be dead. So it's difficult for them to uh, continue to fish in that water. And so they are just relying right now on what they have had before that stock and so when the as a talk is depleting the problem would increase for them so uh, there's need to hasten efforts by all concerned including if and now we've come to stay to ensure that we articulate these problems with, of these communities properly and be able to liaise with the necessary agencies government agencies and then engage um, mobile nigeria uh, unlimited more producing natural unlimited on what they need to do on short-term basis, on mid-term basis, and on long-term basis to assuage the situation so that these people can have a normal life again. All right. What's the certainty that, um, because you just mentioned Mobile now, and Mobile has gone on to deny any involvement in it. It's even gone on yeah. to ask for an audit uh, from uh, Nostra, that's the oil spill um, agency, the oil spill detection and um, response agency of the country that is in charge uh, of disasters as this. So specifically, what um, has Nostra said about the culpability of um, or otherwise of mobile? Well, uh, that would be a certain. You know, we are not like experts, yeah. and uh, we, we what all we know is that in Aquibom, Mobile is the largest uh, producing company. You know, oil producing company in Aquibom, and so it it's it uh, that's what um, if you see the news is reported Mobile too. So um um. So that, that is it. And um, what I thank God are involving experts to assess whether this is really from them. And so uh, that confirmation is uh, needed to clarify the, who is really the spiller, you know, because if they are the spiller, there's no way they can, they will be able to deny it. And so it, this it looks, uh, that's why I said in my tech time, to really are certain things. And you know, you can only engage or take decisions or act without the right information. So is this right information that we are monitoring and articulating so that we can put facts together to, for effective engagement? And uh, your organization is advocating an environmental audit of, you know, all bearing communities in that state. 
Uh, can you give us more details about what this advocacy is about, really? Yeah. Um, ours is to ensure that the community, affected communities get justice when situations like this um, arise. So um, audit is to help to ascertain what is truly the situation, to what extent, and it's quite necessary. Because um, that um, varies directly with the extent of reparation we will be requesting, you know, for these communities. So uh, audit is quite necessary. And, uh, you know, because we do not act based on uh, assumptions as a, a forum, we act based on facts. And so we always emphasize fact findings so that we will be credible. Whatever we do will be credible and fair and just. So uh, uh, as much as we want justice to, uh, for the communities which are affected by situations like this, we also need to maintain objectivity and fairness. So um, that is the why audit is very important here. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, David Esse. He's the Communications and PR Director of the IBOM Community Development Stakeholders Forum. We appreciate your contributions on the program. Thank you very much. All right. Join us after the break as we celebrate an iconic journalist who's inspired generations with his unwavering passion.